Okay, we actually have 20 minutes still left. And so I'd like to open it up and see if there are questions or comments people would like to make from the floor. And if they could, if you could respect the same punctuality that the panelists have done, we'll get many of you in. Who would like to lead off? So I have a colleague in the first row over there. I think somebody should be walking around with microphones. So okay. If not... There's another question over there. There's one there, you'd say? Yeah. I don't see... There's, there's somebody coming over with a microphone now. If not, let's just share one of the microphones from the panel here to make sure that you get heard. There we go. Okay. Thank you. It was very interesting. I'm, I w I'm, uh, my question is to all of you. The stock markets have fell down very drastically all over the world. I'm interested to see what you think about the future of the stock market and more than that, what will be the future of the cryptocurrencies? Because it <laughs> seems to me that it is diminished totally from the system. Okay, investment advice. Now, uh, <laughs> something over the back there, I think. A microphone, yep, right in the back, middle, there. Yeah. Hmm? I don't see that there, yeah. Je vais ah, parler. Euh, oui, voilà. Je vais parler en français, Je vous en prie, si vous permettez. Euh, euh, les analyses euh, qui sont très intéressantes sur la fragmentation euh, semblent rattacher celle-ci au découplage économique et politique, et souvent lié à ce qui se passe maintenant, à la guerre d'Ukraine. Il me semble que les bases de cette fragmentation ont commencé au début du siècle. Certes, en 2001, la Chine est devenue membre de l'OMC, source d'interdépendance, mais en même temps, elle a créé avec la Russie l'organisation de coopération de Shanghai, qui s'est élargie maintenant et qui est peut-être une base de nouveau non-alignement. Et puis il y a eu la crise 2008 avec la montée du G20 qui se substitue au G7 souvent, et puis le BRIC. Et puis ce qui se passe maintenant. Ce qui se passe maintenant, c'est essentiellement, me semble-t-il, euh, un développement d'un multi-annihilement. Et je vous propose, je vous demande de penser à ce qui se passe ici dans la région. Le voyage du président chinois en Arabie Saoudite et au Golfe, son sens et ses conséquences sur la fragmentation. Merci beaucoup. Je crois que uh, there's also uh, Mr. Severino over there. Just sitting over there, yeah. Who's, and then, then we come to the lady in the front row after that. Yeah. And, uh. Merci de ce panel passionnant. Il y a un point que vous n'avez pas abordé et qui est le sujet de la migration, des migrations. Et je serais euh, très intéressé par savoir comment, dans votre perception, cette question des migrations joue euh, dans euh, la coopération ou l'absence de coopération internationale, son impact sur euh, les, la géopolitique euh, actuelle euh, comme euh, sur l'organisation internationale. C'est un phénomène qui affecte la planète entière, euh, l'Amérique euh, comme euh, l'Europe. C'est un sujet fondamental pour cette région. Comment joue-t-elle dans votre vision euh, du paysage global Merci, Jean-Michel. Et puis, il y a une femme en front, right here. Uh, thank you very much for all the panelists. I have mostly a comment. 
And it's a comment on what Madame Tomé said. Uh, she said, how come Africa has uh, 57 countries and they don't even have one seat on the UN Security Council? So don't you think like the whole world order, starting from the Bretton Woods, it like, you know, with the IMF world, uh, WTO, the whole system, the world system had favored the West, the developing countries on the expense, uh, the, Developed, the developed, countries. developed countries on the expense of the developing countries, which basically somehow hinders their development. Thank you. Okay, thank you. And then there's the gentleman just behind uh -huh. her, and then one before, and then I come to the panel after that. Thank you. Merci beaucoup. Uh, au regard des problèmes évoqués uh, et les défis et distorsions entre le nord et le sud l'Est et l'Ouest, pensez-vous que les organisations internationales et les institutions des Nations Unies, telles que le IMF, sont encore capables de répondre à ces défis ou nécessitent une réforme Merci. Merci. And I think there was a gentleman just behind, and then we'll close. Okay, voilà. We've gone from zero to two mics. Yeah, thank you very much. In line with that question, there was so quite some controversy this summer about the president of the World Bank being called a climate denier. Do you think more broadly that uh, the international organization should be reformed in order to put climate change more at the center of their, their action? Thank you very much. Okay, very pertinent. Thierry, did you have a question? Yeah. Voila. No, uh, after the remark of Monsieur Wallalou a few minutes ago, I would like to say, to confirm that uh, Prince uh, Faisal uh, Al Saud, that is the Minister of Foreign Affairs of Saudi Arabia, will be with us uh, on uh, Sunday uh, afternoon. And uh, I think that will give us an opportunity to discuss uh, the foreign policy of uh, Saudi Arabia. That's, thank you so much for mentioning that. I think there's one final comment over there and then we come to the panel yeah euh, je vais le faire en français en euh, Bertrand Badré euh, a cité Candide euh, est-ce que Bertrand tu ne penses pas que malheureusement euh, nous sommes dans un monde où chacun cultive son jardin mais de manière très différente à l'époque de Voltaire on voyait disparaître les jardins à la française pour se développer les jardins à l'anglaise euh, aujourd'hui il y a quand même pas mal de meurtres dans des jardins anglais donc je, je suis un tout petit peu inquiet parce que je, je suis bien d'accord chacun cultive son jardin mais chacun a une vision du jardin de l'autre différente de la sienne. Et ça, c'est quand même une certaine forme de démondialisation, y compris de nos valeurs. Okay, thank you very much. Can everybody's garden look different or do they have to look more and more alike to be global? Okay, I think we have some very interesting questions and I'm going to just go to the panelists to ask them to pick up on whatever of the questions they think they would like to answer. There's uh, investment advice and stock markets and crypto to start with. There's the issue of migration. There's whether the world system itself has been designed in a way that you could put it slightly differently to say, you know, does it take into account the, the needs and interests of, of developing countries? Uh, do the international institutions have to be uh, in some ways renewed to focus more on climate change and what about this issue of globalization, deglobalization? So, Madame Touré, peut-être qu'on va continuer dans le même, with the same uh, order? Yes. Uh, well, I mean, about the, the system. Uh, obviously, uh, if we go back to uh, 1948, uh, when we were designing uh, even the UN system and uh, the cooperation uh, organization, most of the African countries and Asian countries were under colonization. And we are carrying, uh, you know, all these bags since then. And obviously, they are not fit. That's the least we could say about it. And they need to be reformed. And the first reform is starting by giving a permanent seat to Africa. I think African countries have been uh, consistent with that. 
Um, it's very interesting how when we start talking about globalization, China invites itself as a main topic. <laughs> I mean, that's a pattern I observed everywhere, uh, which speaks to how powerful they are, whether we like it or not, um, which doesn't matter to them anyway. Uh, but what we have to see is that from where I'm sitting again, Africa, we are saying, well, this is a model that we need to have. Because as you pointed out, uh, drastically over 40 to 30 years, poverty went down at a rate never seen before in history. Um, this is now a powerhouse in the international scene. So why don't we do that? And I think it, you know, our traditional partners have to be very aware that uh, for African leaders, China is, remain, is going to remain as a key player. Of course, there is no free money, but there's never been free money dealing with the West, neither, on the contrary. So I think um, if we would like to sort of keep uh, businessing together, we better pay attention to uh, what is going on in the relationship between China and, uh, and the rest of the world and Africa, which is a mineral-rich continent, and it's going to be the same for a long time. So I think the question is posed to OCD countries and to other uh, international partners who want to make money in Africa. Second, uh, the, the, the issue about um, migration, uh, which is part also of the, you know, the, 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 the struggle we are having with, <laughs> with Europe, mostly. Um, I was reading yesterday that um, there is a dire lack of, 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 of you know, um, I mean, people are having jobs, but they're not seeing people to take the jobs. <laughs> There's a lack uh, of, uh, of workers, obviously. Um, but yet, you do have unfit uh, migration regulation, which is more of a sort of psychological barrier than, you know, a, a, a making sense <laughs> decision. Europe needs young workers, obviously, but of, of a certain type, according to voters. Do you want them to look like European? But it's not going to be the case, because Europe is a very old continent. And as you know, the, the, the only uh, you know, um, uh, workers you can get mostly will be from places that don't look like <laughs> European. So that is also something that we need to, Europe needs to deal with. I think Europe reminds me of, you know, old castles, um, you know, that used to have their times uh, and who refuse now to see that, I mean, the foundation are aging and you need to maybe do some maintenance. Um, so I think... Um, this uh, type of uh, forum help us to, to move forward okay. because we have to go to the bottom line of the issue if you want to find solutions. I think there is a way for good cooperation on a win-win basis. Um, the lady who raised the issues is, is the same. In Africa, you are having now strong movement of youth. Uh, mind you, 70% of the population is below the age of 35. So talking to them about the past is not relevant. What they want to see is solution now. And if we really would like to build healthy relationship um, and somehow, because that's, that's the issue of uh, OECD countries contain, uh, mean, meaning the expansion of, of China, it, it's to redefine the way we do business. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, let's take two minutes each, please. So, shall we? Thank you. On the um, stock market, we are more concerned about the consequences than the, the causes at the WTO. Consequences could be uh, financial crisis in developing countries, which are already struggling with their food bills, which are very high because of the inflation. So, the question of the fragmentation and the China posed by Mr. Wallalou. Well, d'abord, the China cherche pas du tout en matière commerciale des alternatives au système multilatéral existant. Au contraire, elle, elle aime beaucoup l'OMC, elle a des intérêts dedans. Elle a d'ailleurs euh, offert à l'OMC un jardin chinois qui est à l'entrée, qui est très beau, qui montre une certaine intention de rester dans l'institution. Euh, ce qui est intéressant pour comprendre la, 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 la dynamique, c'est de regarder la, la guerre commerciale Chine-États-Unis. Euh, on a une, une première étude qui n'est pas de l'OMC, qui est du Peterson Institute, mais qui dit qu'en gros, euh, un... Cette guerre commerciale n'a pas conduit à un découplage entre la Chine et les états unis Le commerce a continué à progresser. Et deux, cette guerre commerciale a produit exactement les effets qui étaient ceux qui étaient visés. C'est-à-dire sur les produits 
euh, visé par les sanctions, euh, par les tarifs américains, il y a eu une réduction sérieuse du commerce, souvent des produits intermédiaires, des produits de technologie. Et sur les produits qui n'étaient pas visés, il y a eu, comme par exemple les consoles de jeux pour les, pour, pour les jeunes américains, parce que là, ça posait des problèmes politiques. Euh, pour ceux des produits qui n'étaient pas visés, il y a eu une augmentation du, du, du commerce. Et je pense que la globalisation du futur va avoir quelque chose à voir avec ça. Des, des choses plus complexes, plus sélectives sur les produits de haute technologie, sur les produits euh, de type semi-conducteur, euh, voitures électriques, etc. On va voir de la fragmentation, mais pas nécessairement sur le, le, le panorama global. Sur la question de l'immigration, chez, chez nous, dans le commerce, elle se traduit par la question des mouvements de personnes euh, physiques dans, le, dans, les, dans, dans les services. Et là, on tombe sur ce que Aminata a dit, c'est-à-dire l'opposition ou, ou Bertrand euh, Ouest-Sud, c'est-à-dire que dans l'héritage des règles, c'est un secteur qui est moins libéralisé que celui des biens euh, et s'il fait partie des asymétries euh, qui compliquent beaucoup les négociations parce que les, les pays qui ont un intérêt à l'exportation de ces prestations de services par la, par la main d'œuvre considèrent qu'il faut d'abord remettre à niveau avant de faire d'autres libéralisations dans les autres secteurs. Donc on a, on, on, on a ça. And last on the question uh, about Africa and global governance, I think uh, in the WTO we see Africa claiming its voice more and more. Uh, of course, uh, our leader is an African, uh, which is not uh, by accident, it means something. Uh, second, Africa is uh, more and more invested in the negotiation. I'll just take one example, is our dispute settlement system, which has been weakened by the, um, by the US. Uh, Africa is pleading for its restoration. And what is really interesting is that Africa was not a user of the dispute settlement system. There are very minimal cases where Africa has been involved in a, in a trade dispute. So that means Africa is interested in having the non-discrimination principle being enforced in the WTO uh, in the future. Thank, Thank you very much. Vincent, I just come down. The Thank you. So uh, I'll take the stock price uh, and crypto question and uh, the migration one uh, just briefly. So uh, the fact that stock prices uh, have suffered is, is no surprise with interest rates moving up and bound to move up further uh, after years and years of negative interest rates or, or free money. There was a, an asset bubble, uh, clearly, and it's now popping. Uh, on crypto and, and its collapse, uh, I think this illustrates the need to regulate crypto and more generally uh, the shadow banking uh, sector uh, more carefully because uh, uh, the, the, those developments can have systemic uh, consequences. Uh, on migration, uh, I think it's interesting to uh, see the differences between OECD countries. Uh, some countries have uh, welcomed m migrants with open arms on a, on a big scale, for example, Sweden. Um, others are more reluctant, uh, Korea, Japan, traditionally, but even in Korea and Japan, where they tend to prefer uh, robots to, to immigrants, they are now uh, employing more and more uh, immigrants. Uh, it, it's not necessarily an open policy in Japan, for example, but it, it is clearly a, a trend from a very low base, but it, it's moving up. Thank you very much, Vincent. Okay. Tim. Yeah, I'm going to talk about very briefly about the China. I mean, China has contributed to the uh, world economy, I mean, after the joining the WTO. And the China exported the, 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 the disinflation, deflation, or price stability to the world uh, for, the, for the last two decades, and also create the market as well. So uh, there is a good aspects of the China. Uh, but now I think that the world is now in the page of the, the aftermath of the global financial crisis still. So for more than 15 years, I mean, we are now suffering from the, uh, the aftermath of the global financial crisis and also cheap money as well. And so all of these kind of things, I mean, and also the, the, the relations between the Saudi Arabia and the United States are now, now the, uh, because of the necessity of the cooperation between the two countries in terms of the natural resources and oil, then I think that um, the Saudi Arabia would be more independent from the, uh, the, uh, the Western countries. And, then, and the BRICS, all the BRICS countries are now very, very welcome the, uh, the application of the Saudi Arabia joining the, the BRICS. Uh, BRICS, uh, uh, BRICS. So, and in, in, in June, we had the, the G7 and we had the, you know, the NATO summit. But um, uh, don't forget that um, there was a very big uh, this, uh, the gatherings of the BRICS summit uh, countries. So Indian Prime Minister Modi was very busy uh, to participate in the, uh, the BRICS summit and followed by the G7. So, so, so another big, big war is now the moving, moving the without the, the, uh, noticing, uh, the, our noticing of the, the what's going on. And the last one is about the, the international, the reformation of the international organization. I think that um, now the international organization has, 
has played a very good role, but um, now I think that it's time to think, really think about the, the reform of the, the organization, international organizations, especially United Nations and Security Council and other uh, some, of course, I mean, trade uh, order as well. And because, and the cryptocurrency and the many other issues uh, now we are now uh, talking, but um, the main problem is that uh, we have no global governance. We have no uh, global regulations uh, uh, to cover the, all these kind of the, the rules. So that's the one of the main reasons why the, we cannot uh, uh, speed, uh, we cannot fix the, uh, all these problems and the speedy. Okay. Thank you very much. Chef. Yes, on, on, on equities and crypto, but we, we had very, very low and negative real interest rates, so we had bubbles in other asset markets, and now interest rates are rising, so those bubbles are all bursting, and that will continue for the foreseeable future. And, and in my view, most of those bubbles should burst, and it's a positive development. Uh, quant à l'immigration, je dirais que le paradoxe est que les pays qui ont plus besoin uh, de l'immigration du point de vue économique sont euh, les pays qui, qui plus le, le résistent pour motifs de raisons politiques, ça ne changera pas. Euh, ce sont des, des réalités politiques, et quoi que soit le, les nécessités économiques. And that brings me to a general principle. I'm an academic. I deal in um, what, whys and what's, not shoulds. That is, why does the world look the way it does? What is the way that the world looks? Whatever our shoulds may be, I think it's important to have that in mind. And that get, brings me to this point about the, the Bretton Woods or post-war institutions and the possibilities of other institutions. Sure, the, the post-World War II and the, the reigning international economic institutions definitely obey the golden rule. The golden rule is the people who have the gold get to make the rules. And there's no surprising surprise that those who made the rules in the post-war period made rules that favor them. Um, alternative options, the countries that were successful have been successful. We're not successful because of the non-aligned movement. The non-aligned movement in the, pr the previous non-aligned movement had no impact on development strategies, no positive impact on development strategies. The countries that were successful, the ones that played by the rules, whether it was Korea, China, or others, and that's going to continue, the creation of a new axis, whether it's Russo-Chinese or some other form, is not going to happen, not in the foreseeable future, because as I said and as others have, have also ex echoed, the OECD is not the only game in town, but it is the only realistically significant game in town for developing countries. That's the reality. The reality may be unpleasant, but it is the reality, and it's the reality that developing countries are going to have to live with. Thank you. Bertrand. Merci Massoud, je vais parler en, en, en français sur, sur les cryptos et les, et les marchés, je n'ai pas beaucoup de commentaires. Je rappellerai juste ce que Warren Buffett avait dit en 2008, peut-être certains s'en souviennent, c'est quand la marée baisse qu'on voit qu'il se baigne sans maillot. Et euh, j'ajoutais perfidement à l'époque, on a découvert qu'on était dans un camp de naturistes, il n'y avait pas beaucoup de maillots. Et, et aujourd'hui on voit bien, on l'a vu euh, en Grande-Bretagne au, au moment du mini-budget de Lee Truss, on a découvert que les fonds de pension anglais étaient plus fragiles dans leur structuration qu'on ne le croyait. On le voit aujourd'hui sur les cryptos, il y en aura d'autres. On, on va découvrir des tas de choses sous l'eau qui ne sont pas très plaisantes et ça ne va pas être extrêmement agréable. Sur les organisations internationales, euh, moi je, enfin, on a dit beaucoup de choses et encore une fois leur réforme, elle est à la fois souhaitable et difficile à envisager compte tenu de tous les blocages. Il y a quelque chose qui me paraît très important aujourd'hui. Euh, on a parlé de, 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 du dirigeant de la Banque mondiale. Je pense que toutes les organisations internationales devraient être 100% compatibles Sustainable Development Goals et 100% compatibles Climat. Point barre. On ne commence pas à dire je fais 35%, je fais 42%. Je fais... Non, à un moment, il faut arrêter. La planète s'est donnée une feuille de route. Les organisations internationales suivent la feuille de route, qu'elles l'aiment ou qu'elles ne l'aiment pas. Point. Et là, il faut être absolument, absolument clair. Sur l'immigration, Jean-Michel l'a souligné, je, je l'avais dit un peu, je pense qu'on on, on risque d'être dans un monde assez effrayant. C'est-à-dire que d'un côté, on se replie, comme je le disais, sur son jardin, euh, le French Shoring, comme disait Janet Yellen, on, on, on va rapatrier un certain nombre de choses. Pour un certain nombre de raisons, on va limiter une partie du commerce. Et Jean-Marie, moi, je, je commence à voir dans mes investissements, des gens disent, tu ne peux pas investir là, puisque les produits sont exportés en avion, ça émet du carbone, et donc ce n'est pas bon dans les normes européennes. On va avoir des effets de bord qui vont qu'on va rétrécir tout ça. En face de ça, on a un défi démographique immense, Amina Tatouré l'a rappelé. Euh, comment est-ce qu'on est qu traite ça Si, si on, on se replie sur soi et qu'on n'offre pas de perspective au pays où la démographie explose, euh, et que par ailleurs on ne veut pas de migration chez soi, il y a un moment où on ne va pas square the circle, comment on va y arriver, je ne sais pas. Mais si on ne trouve pas une réponse dans les 5 à 15 ans à cette question, nous avons un monde effrayant devant nous. Je, 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 pèse, je pèse ce mot. Et, et sur la question de, 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 de Philippe Chalmin, 
Euh, oui, il y a plein de jardins, chacun voit son jardin. C'est d'ailleurs le principe du jardin avec les, 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 les palissades, c'est que chacun fait son petit jardin en espérant que la somme de tous les jardins fera quelque chose de formidable. C'est possible, c'est peu vraisemblable. Encore une fois, il y a, il y a, il y a une différence d'échelle entre son jardin individuel et la planète, le jardin d'Éden d'une certaine manière. Et donc, comment, sous le contrôle de Monsieur le rabbin, euh, comment est-ce comment est qu'on organise ce, ce, ce lien entre notre jardin individuel et ce jardin planétaire, euh, je pense que là aussi, si on ne veut pas de ce monde effrayant dont je parlais, il est absolument urgent de tous devenir euh, jardiniers euh, à la française, à la chinoise, euh, à la japonaise, à l'anglaise, tout ce qu'on veut, mais avec cette vision collective indispensable. Merci beaucoup, Bertrand. So, uh, I think we've come to the end of our panel, and uh, I, I'm not going to try to summarize uh, anything, but I just say one thing, which is I think the, what is very clear from this conversation is that there are going to be some really difficult issues to resolve, that are genuine difficult questions with trade-offs that are not easy to sort out. But in that conversation, we should at least attempt not to do, create problems that don't need to exist. And I, I just picked two that were identified One is the question of, of natural gas and its use in Africa. It's an obstacle to a meaningful conversation now because the approach that many countries have taken to the use and development of natural gas in Africa is incoherent with their own policies on the use of natural gas. And by insisting that Africa should find a future energy needs when the majority of people in Africa do not have an energy access uh, at the right level without relying on natural gas while Europe and US should continue to, to draw upon it just creates an unnecessary uh, aggravation in, in an already difficult conversation. And the, the second example I think is, is to, be, to assume that everybody shares the preoccupation and perspective that, say, you have in the U.S. about China today. I mean, we, I sit in the U.S., and we may be preoccupied with the, the impact of a growing China in the world and what that means, but to assume that every other country is equally preoccupied with that and shares the perspective that you have in the U.S. makes it harder to have a conversation. So I think you were saying in the final comment, uh, uh, Madame Touré said that You know, we should not assume and we should start from the recognition that other countries don't have the same perspectives. An honest conversation would help us to go quickly to the difficult problems that we actually will have to resolve with a great deal of discussion. So I think this has been a terrific panel. I want to ask you to please join me in thanking them for their contribution. And, and I think we go directly to the next panel, which is the breakdown of the global economic order, the appropriate next item. <laughs>